Hey everyone and welcome back to the Complete Dentures 1 course at New York City College of Technology, Department of Restorative Dentistry. This lecture is lecture 8 in the set and it's on setting of maxillary 6 anterior teeth. Once again, I'm Professor Galvis. Let's begin. The arrangement of maxillary anterior teeth. Basic arrangement. Other names of this type of maxillary anterior denture tooth alignment are the symmetrical arrangement, the silver dollar setup. Now the term silver dollar is originated when technicians would pride themselves on their speed rapidly aligning the incisal edges of upper anterior teeth to match the rim of a silver dollar. In my opinion as a dental technician and as a denture technician I find this to be something of the past. Uh, a silver dollar has a very circular shape to it most arch forms are not that circular as well as uh, following the same arch form for every patient uh, doesn't give justice to the individuality of each patient's smile so uh, the term silver dollar setup may still be used in some areas or some places in the industry but for me personally i don't think that this term or method should be used in the setting of denture teeth Another characteristic of a basic arrangement is that the axial inclinations of the maxillary anterior teeth are mirror images of each other from right to left side. When we take a look at this image, we can see that according to the long axis of each tooth, which is represented by the dotted line, is inclined in a distal inclination. When we look at the midline between number 8 and 9, the two centrals, you'll see that 8 and 9 are a mirror image of one another as is 7 and 10, and as is 6 and 11. Remember that the human body uh, is as close to be bilaterally symmetrical as possible, although in human nature there's no such thing as a perfect mirror image. Although the more symmetrical a human is, the tendency is that we believe that it is more appeasing or more beautiful to the eye. It's just something that we tend to look towards as people. We look for uh, symmetry and we directly related to uh, easy on the eyes. So the guidelines and procedures. We start with our maxillary occlusal rim. Remember that our occlusal rims have been shaped by the dentist. So if we are following the form of the occlusion rim, uh, especially on the maxillary, the amount of wax we have on the rim is directly correlated to the amount of lip support that is necessary for the case. So when we talk about setting teeth, our teeth should fall in alignment with our maxillary occlusal rim as per the clinician's instructions. So to begin, we start with setting our central incisor. Uh, it really does not matter whether we start with tooth number eight or tooth number nine, the right or left centrals. Uh, it, can honestly be down to the fact that you're a lefty or a righty. Uh, but what does matter is the techniques in which these are set and the specifications that need to be met. So uh, according to the Air Force, it says to cut out a block of wax large enough to accommodate the central incisor and seat the tooth in soft wax. Now, one of the most important things when we talk about setting teeth is space. We've spoken about porcelain teeth versus acrylic teeth, why you would use porcelain teeth versus acrylic teeth, and we know that using acrylic teeth is uh, directly correlated once again to uh, using those materials in situations where there is not a lot of restorative space. So if a denture is uh, a very small denture, when we talk about vertical dimension, then uh, teeth may need to be grinded in order to match the size and shape of the occlusal rim. So how do we compensate for a lack of interarch space? According to the Air Force, it is common for interarch space to be at a premium in a complete denture construction. One solution is to use plastic denture teeth. If that does not help enough, you can cut out the interfering part of the record base as you see in the image to the right. You can adapt the piece of tin foil on the cast slightly larger than the cut around the area and set the record base on the cast over the foil. Try to make a conservative hole in the record base as possible. 
So in regards to setting the teeth, the Air Force does recognize the fact that sometimes there is not enough inter-arch space to fit teeth, and that teeth may need to be grinded, as you see in the image to the left. However, sometimes I find it easier to create holes in the base plate so that we can set teeth over large spans of areas rather than having to grind all the denture teeth uh, completely thin. Uh, if you do grind too much of the denture tooth, you may get rid of the layer of the tooth that is better for bonding to the acrylic base. Uh, but I do believe that a little bit of abrasion on the tooth is good for retention once you process this denture in acrylic. And I also believe that grinding the denture base and thinning it as much as possible is also important. It's important to note that although it says to use a piece of tin foil, this is uh, an older method to keeping the wax and the record base from sticking to the model. Uh, if you do perforate a hole in the base plate, you can place uh, some separating medium such as dye lube or a little thin coat of uh, petroleum jelly uh, underneath on that stone cast and then the wax won't stick to it. So the guidelines and procedures for setting the central incisor. Uh, you want to position the mesial surface onto the midline. Right? The midline is very important. It's one of the first things that a patient will notice when setting teeth. So we want our uh, mesial surface to line up with the midline that has been created by the clinician during the occlusal rim appointment. You want to position the tooth so that the full mesial distal width of the incisal edge contacts the incisal plane. You'll see in the image here they're using a uh, bite plane or occlusal plane to guide the position of the incisal edge. And you can also see, once again, that according to the long axis of the tooth, it does have a distal inclination. And although it has a distal inclination, you'll notice that the incisal edge is parallel to the occlusal plane. And by tilting these teeth with a distal inclination the way they should be set, your incisors should all be uh, parallel to the occlusal plane. So if we take a closer look at the central incisor, uh, by setting it directly on the plane, the incisal edge, it automatically tilts the long axis distally, as we just spoke about. And it should also be noted that the neck of the tooth is somewhat depressed into the wax. So from a lateral aspect, it has a very slight flare uh, anteriorly in, in regards to the long axis of the tooth. And you can see that it's a little depressed at the neck there. So you want to secure the tooth in place by flowing a small amount of molten wax around it and position the other incisor the same way. Uh, the incisal and middle thirds of the labial surface are flush with the labial contour of the wax rim. It's important once again that we follow the maxillary rim. Uh, this is something that is usually done by the clinician in order to uh, imitate or get the result of proper lip support. So if the wax rim seems to be bulky facially or wax has been added and it may not seem correct to you, chances are that that wax was added because the patient was deficient in lip support. So it is important to follow that maxillary rim in those regards. As you see in the image below, depending on where the tooth is, it could result in different types of lip support. Right? The first two images show you setting a tooth following the proper occlusal rim and therefore proper lip support. If the tooth is in front of the labial support of the occlusal rim, then uh, the patient may seem a little buck and might have extra lip support. And while setting the tooth too far into the wax, when you're done setting, it may result in a deficient lip, uh, not enough lip support. And then we make it to our lateral incisor. Uh, once again, it does not matter whether we start with our left or right side, number eight or number nine. Uh, sometimes some textbooks may tell you to set central, central, lateral, lateral, canine, canine. Uh, personally, I do prefer to set uh, the way the Air Force is showing us here, uh, central and then lateral and then canine. Uh, but for the lateral, once again, you're going to prepare a cutout for the lateral incisor and place it in a bed of soft wax. And once again, set the long axis of the lateral at an angle that is more distal uh, to the perpendicular than the central. So the lateral has more of a distal inclination than the central does. And you may also notice that the incisal edge of the lateral should be about one millimeter above the incisal plane. Now this is not a dead set rule. However, it is something that commonly occurs in nature. Some patients may 
request that the laterals are the same length as the centrals. Some of them may ask that they are uh, significantly above the same plane as the centrals. Uh, it really does become uh, a patient prerogative of how they would like their teeth to look when it comes to lateral position. Uh, but the neck should be more depressed than the neck of the central incisor, as you can see from the lateral perspective in the image to the right. And once again, uh, you can see in the image to the left that it does have a distal inclination according to the long axis of the tooth. When we look at it from an occlusal view, you'll see that the incisal third should be flush with the labial contour of the wax rim, just as the central is and also that you must seal the tooth in place. As you set each tooth, you should be taking a hot spatula and sealing the tooth in place so that as you set, uh, you do not move the tooth that is in contact or adjacent to uh, the new tooth. And then the canines. When it comes to canines, the incisal tip of the canine rests on the occlusal plane. And the long axis is tilted more distal to the perpendicular than the central incisor, but not as much as the lateral incisor. So what does that mean? A common question that usually is answered incorrectly is, uh, out of the maxillary six anterior, what tooth has the most distal inclination in reference to the long axis of the tooth? And the answer is actually the lateral. Uh, the canine having a point plays uh, a little bit of a part in why people would assume that the canine looks or appears as if it has the most distal inclination, but it is the lateral. And you'll see that when it comes to the neck of the tooth, it has less of a flare and it is more prominent at the neck. Um, and as we proceed, we can see that from a uh, labial lingual point of view, the long axis is vertical oriented and the middle third of the labial surface is flush with the wax rim. So once again, following the wax rim, for uh, the labial contours and lip support. Another thing that we should take note of is that the canine tooth is located at the corner of the dental arch. In keeping with its position, the canine has two definite planes on its labial face, a mesial plane and a distal plane. And you can see in the image on the bottom right that there is a bulge in the center of the canine, right? And then there's a slant that goes towards the mesial and a slant that goes towards the distal. Those are those two uh, planes on the labial face of the tooth. And in regards to those, if we look at the image above on the top right, we can see that from a facial view, if the patient was smiling, you should be able to see only the mesial plane of the canine, but you can't see the distal. Uh, that is something very common and that is something that needs to be done in your maxillary six anterior to make that turn to follow the arch form. You want to align your mesial plane to follow the curve of your anterior teeth and align the distal plane with your posterior teeth. If the turn doesn't happen, uh, essentially sometimes patients do have wider smiles, however seeing the entire facial of the tooth may make the patient uh, seem like their teeth are flared forward. So it is important to follow those arch forms. Uh, the canine is known as the corner tooth of the mouth, once again. So it is the tooth that will make the turn towards the posterior uh, teeth in the arch form. Once those three maxillary anterior teeth are set, the other three can then be set. Once again, remember that they are mirror images of themselves, so they follow the same rules. So you can position the lateral incisor and the canine on the opposite side and be sure to follow the contour of the occlusion rim. Follow all the parameters we just followed and the case should come out as a mirror image of a right and left. As we complete our six anterior a maxillary setup, we can see that the central incisors are touching the plane as well as the canines and the laterals are about a millimeter off the occlusal plane. So here we have a full denture wax up, once again with variations of the setup style you just saw, basic arrangement. Our centrals on the same plane as our canines, our laterals slightly above, distal inclinations on all the teeth, uh, the most uh, inclined in, in reference to how distal, uh, the tooth that has the most distal inclination is the lateral. And uh, all good points and things to keep in mind when setting your maxillary six anterior teeth. 
So that will cover our brief overview of the maxillary six anterior tooth basic arrangement. Uh, your required readings for this week are from pages 243 to 258 on setting of the maxillary anterior denture teeth as well as things that are covered about basic arrangement over residual ridge, crest of the ridge. We talked a little bit about uh, vigorous arrangements and other things of that nature. So make sure you cover your readings. They will be uh, content that will be covered uh, within the assessments for this week's module. Okay. Uh, well, I, I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and uh, good luck with this week's module and I'll see you next lecture.